He bursts through the emergency room door. The attendant directs him to the doctor. We can't understand what he's saying, but the news isn't good. He follows the doctor into the emergency room, and his wife is lying there, clutching her abdomen and crying with her deformed cartoon fingers. It was a miscarriage. And it's Hubble Vulgaris! Where could my pipe be? Garfield! Garfield's not a webcomic. It, everything's a webcomic, well, except for my web comics, comics, which I don't. They're only published in local newspaper, and I don't put them online. You can find Garfield on the internet. I think that makes it a webcomic. I mean, to be honest, it's about as good. He's the original minion. He yeah, is. He's on yeah, right. Well, um, we got some uh, interesting stuff feed week. It's a four-person show. Uh, I'm here, Busters. I'm Dr. Shaga. Megan's looking for, for some horrible thing to show us. Uh, it's not horrible. You... It's, not horrible. it's from Tumblr. I'm I posting it to the Twitter. Discord. I can't well, it's a believe screen it's cap of a Twitter. It's, okay, so... That'll, that'll look great in an audio podcast. Yeah, that's, that's, audio. that's so horrible, Garris. Like a Tumblr picture of a screen cap of a Twitter <laughs> that we're going to talk about on a podcast. Okay, so what we have here is a screenshot of a tweet by user playing this Oh, this is clever. Oh, I get it now. Yes. At Ayachi Ayachi Tomo. Oh, yeah, I've seen this. We have a gentleman clutching his face. No, okay, so it's a screencast by the music video uh, Flushing Scop. No, wait, is it? Yeah, the, the band Flushing Scotch from the song Cough Syrup Coyote. And it's got the lyrics of the music video that says... Through them hospital doors. The next shot okay. is a is a shot of Eminem from the music video, or just Eminem, like toy soldiers. The lyrics are, meanwhile, my attention is pulled in the direction of some receptionist. Next, it's a shot of uh, Robert Palmer, and the lyrics from, bad case of loving you. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. And finally, something was wrong. She was crying on the bed when I walked in from Geldof's I cry too. I made somebody do a Bob Geldof song that wasn't "I Don't Like Mondays." Yeah, right. me too. That, that's the only one I know. I and mean, that ties very well in with Garfield. Has anybody ever done like a, a like a cover of Garfield singing "I Don't Like Mondays"? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I, I've never heard that song though. <laughs> uh, it's this great song about a mass shooting. <laughs> oh, oh, really oh no, I've heard shooting. of that. Did Did someone actually die in that shooting, or was it? Um... I don't know. Uh, that's not cheery. Uh, Pinback, though, did you talk about last episode? Did you talk about that Tumblr bot that you found that you were showing us all? Which one? The one that uh, takes uh, screen caps of oh, NCIS. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, um, oh, yeah. Of the, the, uh, the, 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 the it's not NCIS. It's, yeah. it's SVU. It's, yeah, it's Law and Order Special well, Victims letters, Unit. Goes. And it's... Um, Oh, where is it? I love I love Twitter bots. I follow a lot of them. I just I love how you can get just random stuff that's shoved into an algorithm, and then something that's still kind of coherent can manage to come out the other end. And somehow I find it incredibly entertaining. I'm- well, this one is uh, I guess it's just for you, but it's it's basically a bot that generates a new street drug. Drug. It takes a screenshot from Law and Order SVU of people talking, and it it does kind of a Mad Lib where where it takes the phrase. Um, she overdosed on X Y. It's the new drug that you get from Z, and it makes you B A. Yeah, it's okay. at Ice T S V U. Um, on Twitter, it's it's Detective Finn from Law and Order S V U. And uh, here's some examples of, yeah, of read, some of the content it these. generates. Just imagine Ice T. Um, saying these things in an episode of Law and Order. Um, coroner says she was high on something called cat whimpers. Picked her up in Red Hook after trying to hold up a sizzler with a can of roach spray. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, that's one formula. Is is the the drug will cause you to be picked up in location with item yeah. being yeah. The kids, are, the kids are calling it X Y Z. It's, it's a mixture of X, Y, yeah. 
Yeah, here, give you another like one. Just, yeah, they call it chill Christmas. Somebody slips <laughs> it into a kid's drink. Next day, he wakes up at the bottom of an empty swimming pool covered in Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good one. Yeah, so uh, these these Twitter bots we we're talking about. Um, and speaking of Twitter bots, uh, one that a friend of ours used to run. Um, we should talk about that because we might get a, a drop in guest. The threat of Georgeson hangs over us. You've heard us mention offhand Georgeson. You've heard us read a little bit of Georgeson. We finally we attempted. You heard a cold open a few weeks ago where I referred to George as a fucking retard because he couldn't figure out how to click like three buttons on an app. We finally figured out a way that we might be able to get George to join the high technology super secret. Uh, you know, uh, what's that word for when you're your cell phone? Come on. <laughs> Proprietary uh, Homo Vulgaris recording software. Which is also complex and arcane. Uh, we gave him a phone number. I've been calling us call the now. Skunk Coven. The Skunk Coven, I like that. <laughs> yeah, he could. He. We. We've made a Twitter bots of him, and uh, they've been banned for um, racism, just just because that's what he says. Um, yeah. so, so we could have him at any moment come in screaming all sorts of vulgarities. Um, so if you're listening to this after the fact. Uh, just, you know, be, be aware you're driving your car to work. You're enjoying my dulcet tones as you navigate your way around the streets. There could be an angry Georgian man who breaks in here screaming about um, the state of black man in U.S. prison. So Yeah, you know, or Africa. Or, right. Um, he'll or, say some really horrible things. You know, you content him. warning for everything. I yeah. think, Including honest, scopophobia. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Yep. I just I feel like our whole show should be a blanket content warning. Like we're we're not trying to upset anybody, but it's a pretty freewheeling conversation. Uh, we don't we don't put a lot of filters on us here at Homo Vulgaris. It's just that kind of show. So if you right, know, I was I was listening time, to uh, one of the episode, uh, I, I was listening to one of the episodes I wasn't on about uh, the 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 big titty skunk episode while I was uh, driving around in my car. I stopped in the Taco Bell drive-thru and began ordering just as you guys started talking about uh, Catherine the Great's proclivities towards the equine. Um, so I don't know who you are, Jerry. Yeah. So that they got be two chicken that. McNuggets, a large soda, and being fucked to death by a horse. Right. But five, please drive up. Right. Well, I was saying, like, in the, the, I think that we're doing good with episode ten. We're hitting a good mixture of like insightful commentary and man get, and getting fucked to death by a horse humor. Mm -hmm. I've got a caramel macchiato for a Mister Hands. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no uh, speaking of cartoons, things got really difficult for Mister Hands. Speaking of our uh, growing viewership, more and more people have been showing up on our Discord. That link is on a lot of episodes, and uh, we've been getting a little bit of feedback, but honestly, we want more. If there's a topic you want us to discuss, or a website, or something we should look into, show us, man. We want yeah, to see like, it. Come, come engage with us. We're, we're pretty open. We're not nothing special. We've got a Discord. We've got uh, an email at homovulgarispodcast at gmail.com. Uh, some of us are on Twitter. You can at us really anytime. I've got nothing better to do but post and make posts and read posts. So post right. So if you want to pull the uh, internet version of a guy with a trench coat and just like drop into our uh, Discord and link us a picture, eh, do it. Show yeah, us your dick. Have to. Are you yeah. one of those people that needs to show everyone your dick? Come show Homo Vulgaris your dick. And we'll, we'll show it on the, the show. Internet. Yeah. Well, your right. dick is non-confidential. Or whatever Send genitals it to you have. Yeah, yeah, well said it to Georgeson. Georgeson will have a look at it. We can just get a whole segment of Georgeson reviewing all the dick pics <laughs> we send him. That, that, that's Blade a show. Long. I've well, come three times in the forehead.
topic-wise, though, um, one of the things that's taken off on the Discord is the we have a, a webcomic uh, little sub thing. We did a few episodes, I think two. We've talked about webcomics before. It's something I'm really into, um, and the I make reason, one. yeah, yeah. The the reason we did it though was because I don't think we've talked about Kiwi Day yet at all. And so so we started the little sub channel to to talk about Kiwi Day because it is a long running cartoon, fifteen years worth of content uh, that we peruse through. Megan, why don't you tell us what Kiwi Day is? All right, should I start with how I found it because literally no one knows about it? Maybe that's the maybe yeah. that's part of it. And, and the reason we it became such a discussion on the shows is because it's one of those. Uh, old websites that has no proper search engine optimization. No one's ever going to find it. No one's linking to it. No one cares about it. Except who? You? How'd you find it? It's official well, webcomic. Home of cares. It is so far. We might make our own. Uh, but anyways, so I make a webcomic, um, and sometimes I go looking for feedback. Uh, I generally hang out around Tumblr, and Tumblr's the worst place for feedback imaginable, so what I was recommended to do was go to 4chan, which is... Okay, so 4chan, I don't really care what they say or do, because it's like, I don't have to look at it. I hate the way the site looks, but that's just a me thing. Anyways, there is a recurring webcomic thread for people creating webcomics and looking for advice, feedback, and stuff. And one of the people posting in there was the author of Kiwi Day. And he's one of three people that seems to be, like, universally hated there. The other two are also kind of amazing. One of them is basically the Georgeson of webcomics. The other is something. I need to do some more research on the other guy. But so by the Georgeson, he's one of the three. not to distract, but by the Georgeson of webcomics, you mean, like, mm -hmm. uh, they do a lot of comics about, like, getting shot and drinking? Um, he he's, um... An incoherent, angry person who picks fights on the thread, and he draws in the most bizarre mix of JPEG artifacts and in neon colors imaginable. And it's always yeah. about like demons and shit, but they cuss and there's titties and whatever. That, that's our George. And I remember when he would send. He would like to send crudely photoshopped uh, photos to us of just mashups of his favorite shows, but then like crudely compressed and over layered on top of each other so it sounds accurate yeah let me find uh, my favorite line from from his um he he does many things i'll give you my favorite line from my favorite of his bullshit yeah it's, it's sad that i almost know exactly where to get it i found it I don't care about Earth. Humans threw deviled eggs at me and called me devil demon. And they threw tomatoes at me. T-A-M-A-T-O-E-S. Tomatoes. At you. And called you demon juice. Because you had juices all over you. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> all right. We're going to have to take yeah, that. We're going to have to get back to that. That sounds very Oh, yeah. Handy. His work is beautiful. Is there um, a username? Does this person post under a username? or? Um, Bones is generally oh. what goes by. <laughs> I'm surprised it wasn't knives or like... <laughs> Something like that, but um, it's bones of ruin. But we, everyone's talking about <laughs> that's, that's so fucking great. Damn but it, that's... Jim! I'm a web comic artist, not a doctor. If that's my favorite gonna... MIDI. That's my favorite MIDI heavy metal band. <laughs> Anyways, we'll need to research him sometime. But right. I wasn't following the antics of Bones at at the moment. But um, the other guy. Uh, is named Cold Fusion, and his webcomic is Kiwi Day. And half the time he posts in How's Your Webcomic, which is the name of the, the feedback thread, people just tell him to kill himself. Now, <laughs> so, I mean, that, that, that seems like a 4 chan thing, but it's probably because he's posted so much, and he posts the same kind of content over yeah. and over again, that there's really no feedback you can give him. The strange thing is, he's actually, like, very coherent and friendly and does try to be helpful and give other people feedback. And, and like, he's clearly, when you look at his work, he's improved over time, so it's not like he refuses feedback. And, and I, okay, so I wound up getting invited into a Discord chat that was connected to that thread, and everyone there hated Cold Fusion, and... <laughs> The first thing I asked when it came up was, why does everyone hate Cold Fusion? Is he like a child molester or something? <laughs> because And they were like, no, he's just really <laughs> annoying. We, we'll qualify this because, I mean, you said you said kind of why he became such a subject of our, uh, 
of our analysis is because he's been drawing this comic for what, like 15 years, 10 years? Yeah, this is. Uh, let's see, yes. 2002 was when it started. Right. He's yeah. been drawing it for so long, and he's had ongoing plots, updated characters, improvement on his art. Like, there's a lot of good things going on in this webcomic. There's a lot of, like, I don't get bored of this webcomic. The writing's just okay. Everyone's got their favorite character. There's a lot of actually good stuff going on. But what he does bad is he draws little girls with their clothes off. Like, all the time. He uses Barbie doll anatomy. Like, he uses Barbie doll anatomy, but you kind of can't tell. Because, right. like, a lady with her vagina missing still just looks like a naked lady. Um, it's more obvious when he draws the dudes. So it just looks like he's afraid of dicks. You aren't afraid of... I am. I just find them kind of dumb. Dicks are the clowns of human anatomy. So everyone needs to go to the Discord and show us there so we can show Georgeson. Right. Um, but anyway, emote that we can rate your dick. We'll rate it clown. Is it's there like a clown? A I added a, I added a clown emote so we could rate things clown. Yes. Nice. Yeah, it goes like it goes clown, circus clown, insane clown, Kim Curry clown, and then that's like your highest score. Oh well. Uh, in any case. Um, we, uh, we, there's a lot of weird pathologies in, in this guy's stuff. Like, literally every time a character gets wet, they have to take their clothes off. Um, like the shitty version of Ronma and half. Yeah, lots Kinda. of... <clears throat> but um, Ronma never... Uh, Ronma never got eaten out on screen. Right, so that's the other thing. There is, there is well, there was sex, this one, but it's handled was... in this weird, like... I'm not gonna say innocent, because he would qualify it as innocent, but it's not like... He's not drawing porn. He's just drawing people doing sex in a, a PG thirteen way. It's it's like one of those Wikipedia entries on a sex act where they have the very clinical line drawings showing you how to do it. It's weird. It's really infantile. Well, it's like a really infantile view of sex that he has. Or he'll, yeah, it'll be like like just there. Right. Like so it's, I, just, and it's interesting that you brought up uh, what is it? Ren Renama. What is that one? Ronama one half. Because uh, he, one of my he, favorites, by the way. He he compares his comics to things like that and uh, Cutie Honey, Chinchi Muyo. God, what's the other one that he? So he's got like the whole horrible Garris '90s anime thing going on. Kind of, but he thinks he can recapture that on the internet in the year 2015, and people are going to be totally okay with it. Like, hold up, what year is it? Yeah, whoa, buddy. Uh oh. <laughs> Back the fuck up. Drink him a little bit. <laughs> it's um. It's now we need to trigger warn this for alternate reality dissociation because I'm tripping. Uh, oh right, right, right. The the fucking you, the Mandela effect. effect. Yeah. You lucky son of a bitch. Back in 2015, let me tell you what's coming up. <laughs> okay. Going down. Don't spoil it to me. I'm really excited Sinbad about this Bernie makes a genie Sanders movie. Guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this Bernie Sanders guy. He seems like he's got a lot of ideas going, and I'm I'm really excited to hear what he does in the future. I need you to get some Bernstein Bears books. Right. Uh, <laughs> some pictures. Right. Anyways, yes, he thinks he's bringing back some golden era of anime where, like, I guess you can just walk around naked, and it's fine it's not part of the plot it's just everyone's naked right and the problem with that and is he thinks back in the back in the 90s when that or 90s and 80s when that happened that was like that's all they could get away with so that's what they did but now you're not forced into that limitation so why are you doing it also Rumiko takahashi drew like big 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 old titties you know it was meant to be kind of sexy you know it wasn't it wasn't just like a weird set dressing i mean it was yes. a weird set dressing but you know well, the weird thing, is I've seen a few panels of this comic while you guys have been going through it, but I haven't delved in as deep. Um, but it does have this, this 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 strange quality where it's things are, are sexualized, but then like like the art style is kind of so cartoony um, and kind of quaint that it's like it tries to it, it tries to have sexual content and then desexualize it so you can't get upset at it or. Right, he's Fine. big into the, the if, if innocence. He's big into the the innocence factor, which which makes it even creepier because it's like, no, it's it's just they like to touch the naughty places. It's just harmless fun. It's like what? And they he's only like, fuck if they're married. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and no if you're married to a dog, right? 
So yeah. this, there's straight up bestiality like di- displayed in this comic. There's like like shit Dragon you go to Ray. weird websites. Yeah, shit you go to weird websites to see. He just draws like with little chibi characters smiling while they do it, and other characters walk by and talk about. How slaying a dragon was just like, and they got their XP and they, like, these really shitty, like, fourth wall break. But there's not even a fourth wall, it's just kind of this... Yeah, actually, like, so for example, one of the plot is they, they wander into this town that's being attacked by dragons. And they're sacrificing a virgin to the dragon, and the hero's like, oh, we gotta stop this. And the dragon fl- flies down and does what... Shogs just said, and it's not like this horrific, like, berserk manga moment where it's like, oh god, this is horrible, I can't imagine, it's like, he he, no, don't. And then there's like a flock of half-dragon, half-humans who follow the dragon around. Yeah. Doing stuff. I really, like, I don't know what the plot is, I've just seen specific panels you guys have posted with all their weird content, but... So we've got this 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 comic, this web comic, one of millions, which has been going for 15 years. This one person just cranking out content, kind of on their own. Is there an audience for this? Do they have a fan base? Are they making this for anyone but themselves and your ironic enjoyment? Right. So we thought we thought we'd lure him in and talk to him and ask him these questions, and we did. Oh, you got him in the the thing. Well, he's not in the home of Vulgaris chat because f- we figured that that would just spam it up like ridiculously. And I, I appreciate that, because yeah. it might have been a little bit much. And it did. For for two days, we sat with him. Hey, several messages. Basically asking him everything short of, do you fuck children? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. He, 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 actually, uh, he actually bounced out. Uh, I, I don't know why we want to get into why he bounced out, but not yet. Anyways, he, he, we, I, I did ask him, like, hey, man. I, I, I sort of enjoyed your comic, but could you just maybe, I don't know, consider keeping people's clothes on a little bit more? Just, like, a little bit more. And he was like, no, man, I'm going to fight society, man. Society's the one that's fucked up, and I, I'm just trying to break those taboos. I'm like, yeah. Ooh, that's... Maybe, maybe not draw little little kids. Like that. Yeah, those are uh, those are uh, those are red flag phrases right there. He compares it to European comics because apparently, like babies, like run around with their vaginas out all the time in Europe. Well, I mean, little kids are naked all the time. That's not in and of itself abnormal. But the context of this comic isn't just like, oh, hey, look, here's a home video of a little kid running around. Right. And these aren't little kids. These are like preteens. You guys didn't see some of the stuff that I didn't link in the very, very early archives. It's all drawn in pencil. Um, Occasionally, you will have characters who are just literally described as like little girls. Um, There's one that's a... Uh, Naga, who can turn into a human, but when she does, she has no clothes on, because she didn't have clothes on to start with, but she's like seven. Really? So, I, I had no idea how old any of the characters were supposed to yeah, be. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> hard to know, I saw. how old characters are supposed to be. Uh, no, he when, keeps track, uh, though. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like if Henry Darger played a lot of our RPGs. Yeah, yeah that's really much. good. That's a really Boom, good analogy. Henry Darger joke. But uh, I... Uh, uh, there's a documentary about him. We gotta, you gotta show. He's, he's quite... I, he's, you Harry know, Darger love is him. very homo vulgaris. He's, he's maybe the first web comic artist before the internet. <laughs> before the internet. <laughs> I gotta look him he, up. He just drew him in, in his own janitor closet and kept him there until he died. Tens of thousands of I'm pages. A long-running epic novel of little people running around. Little, little, little girls. Some of Not necessarily shogs. Some of them had different equipment. Yeah, I'm seeing let's... penises on, on Google yeah. Image. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But they, are, they were also little girls, so. Uh. Anyways, so yeah, I, I, we. we, we Henry, Henry, Darger, <laughs> Henry Darger was woke and he understood that <laughs> <was a> social <laughs> construct. Uh, I guess we should do a little uh, short explainer for our. Uh, this is what we're going to talk about him for our viewers that don't know him. Uh, it was a kind of special touch dude. A little bit, maybe, I guess today we'd call him on the spectrum. Worked as a janitor for a school, if I remember right. Uh, and was completely unremarkable in life. Didn't have friends, never got married, never reproduced. No one noticed him. No one cared about him. He just mopped up at the school. When he wasn't mopping up schools, he sat in his little tiny one-room apartment and drew an epic epic tale of this otherworldly place called the story of the vivian girls and it's kind of like the chronicles of narnia and it's about like these girls who are the princesses princesses of these areas 
and there's geopolitical um, wars that go on and stuff like that. Yeah, happening. they're like Christians fighting against some godless regime. It's very religious, too. Yeah. It, 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 it has all kinds of weird, fetishy, violent stuff. Like, the kind of, like, like very... Very ahead of his time in weird fetishy violence stuff. Kind of. This sounds like, spot on. Almost Iroguro kind. Of. Yeah, it's 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 very 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 much what Cold Fusion is. Except this guy just drew and wrote these giant novels to himself in his little shed, and no one knew about him until after he died. And then people found thousands of thousands of these incredibly elaborate. They they often look kind of almost trace. Um. Like, he's using the copy and paste, but the old Tracy's, you know, like, just little girls fighting in wars. Yeah, this, and I mean, this guy was born in the 1890s. He did all this in the mid-20th century, so this was all well before um, we all got on the wired. But I would just, I just like to read the full title of this. Oh, yeah, I read the, I read the the abridged title. Read the full title. The story of the Vivian girls in what is known as, as the realms of the unreal of the Glandeco Angelian Angelinian war storm caused by the child slave rebellion. That, that's the full title. That's the full title of his epic, and it really is a fucked up Narnia kind of kind of world. Well, I mean, Narnia is pretty fucked up, right? Well, I mean, more so, more so where if he tried to publish this, someone would call the cops. Yeah, like imagine Narnia, except there's a scene like where the Provenzies get like tortured and have their genitals cut off. Yeah. Yeah, someone would call the cops. Anyways, God, okay, now imagine that with, like, anime. Yeah, it's yeah. exactly that, but with anime. <laughs> I, I can't believe I didn't think of it before, but it's really the, per- the perfect analogy. And so, yeah, we, we talked to Cold Fusion a bit about his work, and he really sticks to his guns. He really thinks that society's the one that's screwed up, and what he's doing with the pee and the and the nudity and the weird sex stuff is, is really just how the world should be, and everyone else is wrong, and he's he's the golden boy. It's going to fix everything. In 2017, when you're like sexual proclivities or something, you're still like, society's against me. Like, there's, yeah, I mean, I don't want to, like, I don't want to, like, uh, erase the struggles of people that, that still have to deal with that. But there's a lot of times in certain subcultures and subsets where people start railing on that, it's, it's, it's code for I'm into some fucked up ass shit, dude. Yeah, if you're online and people are giving and people are like really giving you grief about um outside of reactionary communities uh, about your your sexual proclivities you might actually want to rethink where you're going with things because it's um you know what's, what's that really fuck we've been that? online a long time we've seen a lot there's not that much left to get judgmental about what's that one right. like, comic that's like fantasy art like like lord of the rings but it's really sexy and like like you know everybody fucks in it all like, of them yeah, no, the, dude, all of them. It, it has good art. Come on, um, it's uh, funny. Um, it's good. Um, um, a, a oh, spider is it Olgaf? Yeah, Olgaf. Yeah, Olgaf. Yeah, Olgaf. Yeah, because yeah. 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 oh, okay. yeah. that one's Olgaf. actually like that one's if you're funny like, and not creepy, and it's just funny because because but yeah, oh, yeah, but Olgaf not, is funny. It, it's not um, like a super serious. <laughs> If you're Fantasy in a community drama. that if you're in a community that accepts that, and it's a pretty widely respected comic, and it's really good. If you're in a community of like that accepts that, you know, on the internet with web comics, and you're still like, "This is the world that's wrong," then right. you're yeah. like, you're yeah. going yeah. You know you're going too far. If if you can if you can do do a comic about uh, barbarians fisting each other with swords for honor, and people still laugh at it. And then what you're doing is kind of like more than that. Yeah, you're 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 off the course. But what makes him more fucked up, and I think Megan talked with him more about this than I did, is almost every character in that comic Kiwi Day is based on a real person that he has interacted with, probably over the internet. She came for Cold Fusion. Dot JPEG. It's it is that. <laughs> that joke's oh. way worse considering my name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, so he's doing the thing where he, he's he's writing the girls that he wants to date into the comic. Uh, and no, sort like of. the girls, the girls he's hanging out with in ICQ. I mean, Grant Morrison did that in The Invisible. If we wanted to fuck some like create you know, it's chaos magic, dude. But you know, um, it hasn't worked out for him. I'll tell you this no. much: it hasn't worked out for Cold Fusion. But okay, so let's uh. Uh, I think it's also a good time. One, let's talk about the characters, and two, if we know who they're based on. So, who are the characters? Could you, could you quickly, could you quickly, uh, for the viewers, 
try to give them a, an impression of the visual style of this comic. Oh, well, that's a really complicated... We we'll, like, we'll like, have links for on people that uh, want to in the description. It's a low-rate Atora... Oh, who's the guy who does Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> Akira, Akira, Toriyama. Akira Toriyama. Akira Toriyama. It's low-rate Akira Toriyama with less facial features, kind of chibi style. Um, it's like, there's more to it, though. It's like... like, like um, it's like a, if you ever played a JRPG on the Super Nintendo or some of the early 2D ones on the PlayStation, like everything kind of looks like that, except it's like MS Paint chibi anime instead of sprite work. Uh, like, but it's like everything's kind of on a flat yeah. plane where like the characters all, you're always looking at them kind of in profile, but they're always standing on kind of like an ambiguously isometric terrain. So um, let me get this in. It's technically two comics, so you're both correct. Right. Cold Fusion himself told us that the non-canon art from the first Super Smash Bros. for the N64 is one of his heaviest influences. So if you look at the art in the like the manual or the cover for the N64 Super Smash Bros., that's getting pretty close. It's basically a hand-drawn sprite comic until he does a large time skip, gives it like a second name and a second comic comic genesis account, and then tries harder, and it becomes more of a like a three D space with characters who are more than two heads tall, and like like the shift is admirable because he's he really improved over time. But yes, it started looking it started as pencils, but like it was drawing sprites and then his scanner started fucking up so it was like rainbow lines over everything <laughs> but then the Which current state the of the comic looks pretty good look at him. you can look at the archives and see his progression which is both interesting and strange because he doesn't cover it's admirable it he really is he doesn't he doesn't cover up his path at all you can see his scanner deteriorate and him stop using the number two pencil now it kind of looks right. like maybe sometimes he traces porn for the bodies but i can't quite tell ah the, the classic technique Yes, right. the day by day. The Greg Land. So does he ever talk about why he's still working on this comic after, like, just the same world and characters after all these years, even though he doesn't really have an audience? It's for him. It. Yeah, it's for him. It's 100% for him. See, I can, I can, I can at least rec respect that kind of, I guess, self-satisfaction in your work. Right. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, you can't, you can't yeah. really fault an artist for making art for themselves. Uh, and then, uh, but that that sort of idea also puts it beyond critique, because you know if you're doing this for yourself, why why take anyone else's input in on it ever? But then he's got that whole thing that he thinks he's going to somehow be a beacon for a resurgence of '90s anime mentality. So it's like he thinks he's like the Lord's Shepherd, but also he doesn't care if no one ever knows he exists. Weird, right? But this, <laughs> isn't even the, this isn't even the good '90s anime, though. Uh, yeah, why isn't he doing Demon Shitty Shinjuku and Wicked City and Doom Megapolis? No, that's and and tank why is he police? just doing Kitten K Boodle with humans? Yeah. Oh, he's not as good as Kitten K Boodle. So, um, we'll get, well, instead of running down the whole cast, can we talk about um, some of the characters and who they're based on? Okay. Well, most of the main characters who are on screen all the time technically aren't based on anyone, but a lot of them have connections or backstory that links into characters that wind up just being cameos. So in the first segment, before he has a, like that huge art shift back when it was Pencil, it was a character named Kishan, who was a Goku clone, mm -hmm. a character named Oak, who was a Link clone, a character named Sorobon, who was a Ness clone. Uh, Nene, the cat girl. So, you know, that was original. Um, and uh, Loki, the werewolf. And okay, a few so other guys. But then everyone... Hmm? Keyshawn, Keyshawn, you say he's a Goku clone, but at least he looks more like uh, like Goku... Not Goku, Goku like, Street Fighter. He, like, he looks more like a monkey from Journey to the West. At least he's not a complete, like, image ripoff, but the Link dude is literally, like, honestly, I thought it was just Link, Link. with different pants. Yeah, it's Link Like, with literally, pants. his pants are a different color. And it goes into one of the more annoying qualities of the comic is the referentialism, because they will don't they make a bunch of jokes, like, oh, do you look like somebody? Or, like, oh, you're, like, some video game I played, or... Well, and then, yep. and then uh, also just fact, the inclusion just, of characters that are obviously from other media, and you can't tell if it's a reference or if he's just not creative enough to come up with like an original. An incredibly thing. lazy. Keyshawn eventually gets a cloud ride. 
Yeah. Ah, of course he does. But this isn't like these things aren't unusual for web comics, right? Like, like a lot of these problems and these impulses are were kind of a dime a dozen because it, it seems like everybody tried to do a web comic in the two thousands. Okay. Um. Anyways, those core characters were clearly just ripoffs of like Nintendo shit and anime and stuff. But then when he would show these to his friends in some IRC somewhere, everyone would be like, "Put my character in it. Put my character in it." And that means that there's a huge cast of weird characters who are sometimes just a, a name of one of his friends tacked on to like somebody's mom or something. But then wow. some of it carries down into like there's there's like two generations of heroes now. And yeah, some of he, them are He pulled he pulled like, and people. he called the first one Kiwi Day and he calls the next one Kiwi Day in instead of Z because it's basically the Dragon Ball Z to his original. Or Slayer's next. Yeah. I should have asked if that's what he meant. Yeah, that's it, a, that's an know. astute observation. Oh, I thought it was and like yeah. the next generation, like Star Trek or Sailor Moon S, or just that nineties. Yeah, yeah, it's anime. That weird. Wait, wait, wait. Thing whatever, that. whatever anime. When you make a sequel, you got add a letter after it, and he did. Yeah, anyways, the um the characters reproduce and have the kids become the new heroes and all that other stuff and some of them are based off of people some of them were based a little more off of people than others uh one of the characters from the original run is someone he knew named uh, lobster and lobster eventually gets a girlfriend who was the guy's actual girlfriend in real life and apparently she was really controlling over what would happen with the character and he made cold fusion put her cats in it and they talked and they called them their kids <laughs> and like so the story gets bogged down with things like that quite often yeah well, that, and it that, meanders that seems so, like wait. a tradition in a lot of uh, online and I guess kind of outsider art is 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 it becomes, in at least in some ways, very autobiographical or or even more like a sort of wish fulfillment thing where the where the where the author tries to displace or work through their their issues and insecurities within their fictional space. That's all right. art to a degree. Well, I guess, but it becomes very, like, it's really prominent with stuff like this, or Sonichu, or... There's um, less of a poetic filter in a lot of these works. Right. When you, well, and then what it comes down to, how it, how it, what separates it from good writing and bad writing is, as a reader, am I being introduced to this character because this character is going to further the plot, or entertain me in some way, or... Or just enhance the story in any way, or is this character only appearing because someone wants that person to be in the universe now? Sometimes the people who wanted those characters then disappeared from his social circle eleven days later. Almost immediately, and it was a friend of a friend. Big old continuity problem. So he's got so, a lot of baggage. Like I've asked him um, about some of these, like, "Oh, is this character coming back? Is this car character coming back?" And sometimes the answer is like, "Oh, well, I'm not friends with that person anymore, so I don't want to use that character." So it's like it. it, it it gets kind of snarly, like the continuity just kind of goes nowhere a lot of the time. Right, and so that's kind of, that's kind of a lot of the grounds we ran into when we ran our little experiment and, and started talking to him is um, he chooses his hills to die on poorly. Like he's he's not gonna make the the comic more viewer friendly, and he's he's not gonna focus down and have a plot. He's just gonna. He's just gonna do whatever he wants. But what he wants also includes like naked eight year olds. Yeah, so it's not a it's it's less of a oh whatever, you're doing what you're doing, man. Keep it up. It's like, hey dude, this this is not just like a little critique like, hey, you can clean up your line work. This is like, 
hey man, your shows you're, you're, you could get you in trouble depending on what country you live in. So, do you think this guy has like weird proclivities that they're trying to deny? Oh, either yeah. that they like. Do you think he's denying these things to himself? Like when you criticize him to these things, is he like, oh, they're on to me, or does he honestly not see their see their own? Uh, I guess sort of pathologies. I think I think it's one hundred percent that like a lot of this is him trying to find a way to rationalize. Uh, I'll his, find a his, quote. Give me a his, sec. Yeah, his own sexuality. Like in my discussions with him, um, it, it just it just seemed like. Uh, God, yeah, I'm trying to remember some of the quotes I had with him, too, like, because he just, he would just, uh, shut down anything, like, I'm just like, hey, man, just put some, just clothes, that's all it is, clothes. You could have, Best way to you could have, pre you could have teenage romance without teenage sexuality and teenage nudity, and he, he completely dismissed that idea. Recent quote, the best way to avoid sexual immorality, jerk off, your conscience will be clean, even if something else isn't. But the oh, something God. else is like a drawing of a kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do so do you think this this kind of attempt to maybe for lack of a better word whitewash the more problematic elements out of the sexual content in the comic is represents something internal that's going on where they're trying to not see the upsetting parts of their own sexual proclivities. I think so, and he didn't have he doesn't have much as I understand, going on in his life right now. Um, <laughs> like, He's trying so, to retcon his own dick. Right, and so his... <laughs> his it, I wouldn't say it's an internal struggle he's dealing with, because his comic is, is pretty much his, his external outlet to the world in general. Like, he's putting yeah. this out there, and he thinks by putting this out there, he's going to make it more acceptable. But because he's tone deaf, he's not hitting it. Yeah, so I'm you think there is... A deliberate attempt here to um, nor uh, I, I normalize um, and uh, right. Okay, I, I remember what I was going to say. Own. This kind of this kind of answers your question. Um, for some reason, every four twenty, April twentieth, he does a comic. If he remembers about the whole cast getting high somehow, okay. And I asked him about this, and he's he says. Oh yeah, my dad when I was growing up, he he was fine with marijuana. He was fine with pretty much any drug or psychoactive thing that wasn't like a hard drug, like heroin or something like that. And I'm like, well, okay. So do you imbibe, and how often do you do that? He's like, oh no, I have asthma. I would never smoke weed. I don't like him stealing stuff. Does that valor. actually does that actually affect your ability to smoke weed? It does yeah. because of the caffeine and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. If you have if you have asthma, it's unpleasant. If you've, got, um, if you've got asthma, okay, you got I don't have yourself. asthma or weed. He said he he also said I'm, he actually said I'm high all the time because I have asthma, and I'm like, what? 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. His comics don't read like someone who's ever smoked weed, and I I know because I don't either, and it, like just it it looks like something I would have thought that that was like when I was like twelve. Yeah, there's but a the certain same, style to people who try and do like drug music or drug comics or drug stories and ain't never done done no drugs. Right. So he's seen he's seen Cheech and Chong and he mentioned that to me and he just kinda tries to ape that, but he really doesn't get it. Um and so that's one of the things though where he's trying to he has the social issue of drugs. And he's trying to normalize it and make society accept it by just inserting it into his comic incredibly arbitrarily with zero context and then walking away from it like, there, I solved it. I solved drugs, people. Drugs are, drugs are normal. And he did, this kind with, of, um... he did this with something else, which I think maybe I'll let Megan take the wheels on, but that something else is what ended our dialogue with him. Oh, we're, are we gonna... Okay, so oh, if he... You want, if this you was wanna, like if, literally like 20 minutes ago. It was literally 20 minutes ago. If you want to talk about it more, but I think this is a nice oh, yeah. way out of it, is, is you know, we were trying to be polite. We were trying to be like, hey, pedophilia, not cool, bro. Just just tone it down. We weren't we weren't even being that comfort, confrontational. We were just trying to like, be yeah, like... You guys were we're being pretty friendly and measured in your critique. Right, and we're just like, hey, we like this, this, and this, just clothes. Make him wear clothes and less less, less weird sex. That, I was great. making him fan art of his characters in different outfits, which, you know, you know, it's clothes. He seems to have a problem with it, but I was drawing them in, like, more detailed costumes and stuff, and he loved it because it was fan art. 
and he liked the ideas and thought they looked cool in my style and all of that. Like, like he was, he was cool. Like I was, I was the good one. My ideas too. We had, we had a bunch of ideas and he was like, Oh wow, this is great. I, I just wish more people would give me input and we were having a good time. We were laughing around and I would be like, ha ha buddy, you just put some clothes on. Ha ha. We're having a good time. Just don't be a creep. Ha ha. But then yeah. I flipped the bitch switch. <laughs> Yeah, it worked so well. I, I mean, I was well. a little bit of a bad cop, and she was playing good cop with the fan art. And I'd be like, "Yeah, buddy, I like your comic too, but hey, don't be a creep." I jumped it a little too soon. Probably we could have gotten more out of them, but he's not necessarily gone. I really it was resilient. You, know, you think he'll come back after that? Um, he said like he was gonna. He like he was trying to take like a weird high ground, being like, "I'll wait for you to cool off." Not that I think you need to, but I'm gonna. I'll come back later, and maybe we'll just have a strictly business relationship where business. I make some fan like, art or whatever. Like he'll make the fan art, and then you'll get paid with attention. That's a business relationship. I don't know. That's not how he actually said it, but it's more or less like just like we shouldn't actually talk. But if you want to give me ideas or fan art, that's great. He, he said he's going to give me fan art. Relationship, so I don't know. How We're that working works. relationship. I have the the conversation up here because I was right. lurking. Oh, okay, good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause... What what triggered it was? Uh, I mean, he's he's handled the uh, he's handled. I said weed. He's handled the issue of peeing on people, which he thinks should be normal, and he'll just include that in his comic. Occasionally, be like, "Ah, we should pee on someone." That's which wait, I mean, wait, you wait, know, wait, consensually. Wait, yeah. Is he trying to normalize the fetish, or is he trying to normalize it as like a day to day activity? It's like, hey, we got stung by a jellyfish, so you should pee on me, but I might enjoy that. It's a little a of little, everything. Little of both there. And it's like, well, why did why did that happen? Why did that need to be included? Was that an episode of Friends? Eh, yeah, it is. It, it's it's a common trope, but at the same time, it's like it comes out of the blue, and then and then usually the joke in media is like, I have to pee on you because you got stung by a jellyfish, and you're not going to enjoy it because most people don't enjoy being peed that's, on. Because that's where you get the comedy. Yeah, or, it, the you comedy could just is, use vinegar, I, though. It could be funny have, too yeah. if you have them like they're peeing on, like, oh, yes. And they're like, oh my God, that's weird. But if you're like, no, let's normalize. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay, everyone's okay with it. We're peeing on each other now. Not, not. But in any, and one of the other things, and this is what set it off, is uh, uh, he has a lot of female characters, and occasionally he will just be like, oh, this character's menstruating now. Okay. Yeah. He described um, someone he doesn't like as being constantly on her period, so I, I flipped into um, uh, my native mode as a Tumblrina and gave him the discourse, and he dug in, and then I think he, like, I can't <laughs> quite read the tone of this thing. He <laughs> was either terrified or decided that I was having the vapors. <laughs> right. Cause, cause, like, he'll just do these random inclusions of like minces, and he'll be just like, whatever. Oh, period. Someone's bitchy, but that's okay, cause that's normal. That's normal. I'm not being derogatory about it. I'm just saying it's normal for women to be bitches on PMS. He was and like, I love okay. women. That's why I hate it when they have their periods, because right. it makes them so, so like angry, cause they're suffering. Yeah, that's yeah. that's just like dude. that's here in the chat. Yeah, uh, and it's like it's really that's... weird way to put it. That's not even a way to put it. That's that's disguised misogyny. Yeah, that's, but dressed up as creepy. Dressed up as it's concern trolling. It's misogyny concern trolling. Be like, oh, I'm sorry. Are you is your body controlling your emotions again? That must suck that it happens to you. But what I'm are like sorry? The chances, what are the chances that like he, he fishes old tampons out of a of trash cans and bathrooms just? He yeah. might rubs him on his. I, I don't. I don't want to know. I don't think he goes that far in real life. But I think he's probably been like, if I did that, that would be normal. Like I don't think he's pamper two that. levels now. Right. Yeah. I don't think he actually does stuff like that. But he, if he's thought about it, he's like, well, if I wanted to do that, everyone should be fine with it because that doesn't hurt anyone. I don't think he leaves the house enough to do that. It's not yeah. worth it because he can just sit inside and play Zelda. Exactly. You know what always gets me about like a lot of child molesters is they are like shut ins and they're sometimes like how do you get out there to find kids if you just like sitting inside just watching Star Trek all day because you know there's a pretty large correlation. Hey, uh, you, you, cut that you, you cut that out. You cut that out right now. I don't want to hear you denigrating. Okay, so um, he actually uses Star Trek as an example of oh, his strategy. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> I don't. I've, I've only ever seen one episode of Star Trek. 
Um, and I only watched that episode of Star Trek because my mother needed to explain to us why we had to name our guinea pig Tribble. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Okay, At least there's so a good episode know, of Star Trek. Yeah, if you're only going to see one episode of Star Trek, that's a pretty good one. Uh, or Kirk yeah, versus anyways. the Gorn. Uh, the, the Kirk versus the Gorn is also a good one. But that, um, that. go ahead. I want to. He uses the example of Star Trek solving public issues by creating a world where they're not a problem. And he's made this reference in the commentary for some of the older comics and in the chat. It was just like, oh, well, this thing's a problem I see in real life, so I'm going to make a comic about how this world in that I created doesn't have this problem. In some of I the mean, old um, the old uh, archives, it's about abortion. <laughs> <oof>. <laughs> like, the fact that his characters don't mention abortion means that they're above abortion. And it's like, no, dude, like, you had a character get pregnant and they want to have the baby. There's no mention of abortion because she wants to have the baby. That's fine. Oh, right. well, I mean, that's a solution to abortion. It's just what if everybody wanted every kid they got pregnant with? It's brilliant. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that is. He also a, feels like that like about war, everybody. Man. What, if no one wanted, what if no one wanted to go to war with each other? That would solve everything. Holy shit. So let's I, make a comic about it. Yeah. Uh, that no one well, reads. So what he's referencing is like um, Star Trek was one of the people that had the first interracial kiss, and that was a big deal because it's like, whoa, you put that on television. What Star Trek did not have was the first interracial sex scene. That's that's the thing. He gets the tone of it all wrong. You don't yeah. deal with these things by like, here it is. I'm laying it out. This person's gonna fuck this person, and it's not a racial thing. Kirk and Spock slept in separate beds and everything. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They did. They had their had their own rooms. It's true. They couldn't put that on TV back in the day. <laughs> but I mean, it's not like Star Trek solved racism or no, anything. No, it, didn't, like, it didn't. It, it gave a little bit of public awareness and got people talking, which which uh, all right. But there, I don't think I don't think may, okay maybe maybe Shatner, but I don't think uh, you know the writer of that episode like dusted off his hands after that episode and be like, yep, that took care of it. Racism over. Shatner maybe. Shatner was probably like Yeah, that. he probably yeah. probably has a Netflix special how Star Trek solved racism. We, we, uh, and that was when it, it, the special was how knew. William Shatner solved racism. <laughs> Bloviating <laughs> whale of a man. Well but his uh, album with Ben Folds is really good. Highly recommend. It's a really good album. I think I think um I'm going to encourage our, our, our listeners to check out Kiwi Day, even though we had a rough time with uh Cold Fusion. Um don't read it at work. I mean, as if that needed said. But. I don't think your boss is gonna look over your shoulder and see like that you're reading some like little little little, little MS Paint cartoon and just like immediately like get really close and be like, "Hey, that's a naked child with like yeah. a single dot for a nipple." Well, you know what's funny is I I brought that up when I was like trying to explain to him. I'm like, he's like, "Why would all these naked kids hurt my viewership?" I'm like, "Listen, I'm not gonna walk up to my coworker and be like." <laughs> Hey, check out this web comic I read. It's really it's uh, it's this, these people they go on adventures and they fight stuff. It's really fun. And then the next thing my coworker is going to say is that a naked twelve year old? Like, yeah, he he thinks that he's going to change the world by like teaching them about his morals. But then he also has explicitly said if someone doesn't like what he's doing, that's not a reader he wants. So it's like so you're preaching to the choir. Exactly. So, like, but the choir is also nobody. <laughs> yeah, the the choir is pretty much nobody. The choir, the choir. I mean, the closest the thing choir is us. The choir is us, and we don't even agree with him. So, We're and you guys him. haven't read it all the way through. I'm the only one here who's gone page by page. I've, I've read. read bits, I think I've read a little over half. I think I've read. That's, that's, that's read the more ones than you've expected. Yeah. I don't even. No read one all should those. have to. So like, I'll read one of the ones you post, and I'll go forward a few. Like, I have no idea who any of these characters are, and this is just god awful. Yeah, you know, this I person can see spent... the like the Ed Woody quality of it. Like, it was a little. That kind of sounds like a personal issue cold fusion <laughs> exactly ed, ed wood is he is he is ed wood i think we should show him ed wood if we ever get to show him anything again we should show him ed wood and be like what do you think about this guy the best tim burton he probably movie. knows and just thinks it doesn't apply to him he, he, does, he, does, he doesn't have media he might know and he might be like yeah good old ed wood man he he knew what was up so Definitely, if, if you're, li you know, I hope if people are listening to this, they do go and check out this comic. I think, like, you know, this person made spent 15 years of their life making this. The least people can do is, you know, go check it out. It's outsider art. It's weird. It'll get you inside the head of a, a weirdo who's even weirder than some weirdos. 
Thanks. Right, and, and you know what? It'll actually it make valuable. him happy. It'll make him happy. Like, instead of being like, dude, go fuck with this guy. Go troll with this guy. No. Go fuck with this guy. Don't fuck with this guy. Just read his comic. Enjoy what you can. Uh, he's got, I think he's got, like, one of them. He used to have a log book or one of those things that you could say. He's got a chat it's box. A guest book? <laughs> a guest book, yeah. No, I think yeah, he's got he a, misses it. He, he, the little basket of Web 1.0. Right, he's got a he's got a chat box down at the bottom of the front page. Drop in and and say something nice. Don't be mean. And I'm totally serious here, guys. Don't be mean to him. Be like, hey, we read your comic and put some clothes on those kids or something like that. Like, just be like, this is my favorite character and I loved when so-and-so beat up the dragon person, but dude, they didn't need to fuck. If you care about Homo Vulgaris, send us pictures of Kiwi Day set as your homepage. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the pink slip your employer gives you after that. Right, right. (laughs) At work, work, set set all your work computers homepage to Kiwi Day. Make it the desktop background. Just staple it to your cubicle. <laughs> right next to, to all of your right coworkers. next to the Dilbert. Yes. Staple it to your boss. <laughs> I, I hate my Go up to the water cool- cooler. Like, how about that Kiwi Day? Yeah, no, do what I did. Be like, hey guys, there's this really neat website I heard about on the internet. It's about all these adventures. And look look at that naked little girl. Isn't that adorable? I want you guys to focus so much on the kids fucking and not the the casual bestiality is fully depicted. Well, I mean, that's that's yeah, 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 there's so much to that. Me, it's, like, yeah, well, it's less common. It's less common. It, like, it stands out less in... And I mean, that kind of content stands out less in webcomics. Right. Also, furries are normal now. Whatever. But it's yeah, not, it's whatever. not like... We didn't, even, we didn't even touch on the plethora of, like, half-breeds and, and weird-ass, like, creatures he's got in this. Werewolves come from wolves raping humans. Straight yeah, up. Not, <laughs> Not the moon, not lupus disease, not a witch's curse. Werewolves just, come from the moon. Just, just fuck it. <laughs> the moon's still involved somehow. Yeah. We like the moon. The moon's always involved. We're, so I have... Bulgaris is sponsored by the moon. Dot org. We but love the moon. Please it's donate close to the moon. Because it's close to us. Um, no, closer so I, than I'd like to turn the critical eye inward. And, and, and I'm very curious. Of all of the weird people on your internet of all of the 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 terrible web comics and i know you guys have seen more than a few um elsewhere why I've this seen most guy of them. why this guy in this comic why why did this become kind of your uh, an obsession for you these past few weeks I'm for me curious. it resonates i was i've said before like i was the gaunterman of my my childhood like i was the one who did shitty pencil comics scanned them poorly and posted them to a group of friends that i only sort of knew um i was the one who was like that and i was tenacious and i had a lot of influence from things like tenchi and ranma but also i didn't like i didn't i still don't draw nudes like i just find them gross but um just the the level of web comicness the level of this is an indulgence yeah Just, it's, it's comfortable it's really it's really uh it's it's embodies all things good and all things bad of web comics it's a long-running web comic it's easy to read it's page turning the characters it's on are space yeah the characters are the characters are like i don't feel like they have a lot of depth but at the same time, they've got a little bit of characterization, and you know, I want to know what they do next, and sometimes they have team-ups. Okay, so those are the good. But it's also got all of the bad, like all the worst. So it's it it was so easy for me to read, because I'd just be flipping through, and I'd be like, oh, they're solving dungeon puzzles. Oh, they're fighting bosses. Oh, but they're naked? What? Oh, okay, well, no, they're back to, they're going through the town, and they're buying things from NPCs, and oh, what? What are they? They're, they're peeing on each other? Like, like it, 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 would, it would, it was like, I was enjoying a good read, and then I'd get a page, and I'd be like, "What is with this page? What are you doing on this page?" Like, it's so, it's a, it, a synthesis of the comfortingly familiar, the entertainingly bad, and just the the provocatively weird. Yeah, it's really good on that. that's a good summation. Um, but again, it's also about like the kind of it was easy to read, but occasionally it just grabs your attention by the gonads, and and you're like, "What?" What are you doing? What is this? I do and then you it. go and there's like anime cat girls. That's fun. It's like if you're babysitting a toddler and the toddler's just doing its thing and it's building Lego bricks and all of a sudden it goes, fuck. And you're like, where, where did that come from? Where did you learn that word? <laughs> I love that idea. Right. 
That's that's a good scene. So all things considered, would you say that this comic that no one's ever really read or heard of is really meaningfully that much worse or weirder than a lot of the stuff that was within the webcomic sphere relatively popular now or in the past? No. It's it's pretty par. It's it's better than Sluggy Freelance yeah. because at least it's not boring and it's in color now. So it's better than Mega Tokyo because it's not like pretentious and it's it's better than I can't yeah, think of a third one. Totally, totally, it's uh, it doesn't take itself very seriously. It's really goofy. It's almost, sometimes to a detriment. Sometimes you're like, eh, no one said a serious thing for like three pages. No one said something that isn't a bad pun for like three pages. So with all of these webcomics out there, and with most of them really not being at much of a different level of quality, why do you think some of the ones that became actual things with fan bases and notoriety, what, like, you know, how does how does a Mega Tokyo or a Sluggy Freelance end up becoming a thing and Kiwi Day doesn't when they all kind of really aren't, like, when, when, when there's really not one necessarily elevating? Well, they gotta advertise a little bit, they gotta put themselves out there. Um, you know, social that, skills. Social skills. You got to have a host. Uh, a, I mean, I mean, a hosting site that people can now get around and read your comment. You gotta, you gotta like hit up. I mean, back in the day, maybe like Live Journal and be like, look at my comic. You know, um, so it's kind of a, a logistics and sales thing more than anything to do with the quality of the comics. Right, and then and then, well, with that logistics and sales, you got to have mass appeal. Again, Kiwi Day. Um, back in the day, wasn't good enough for people to be like, "Hey, look at this adventure web comic; it's pretty good." And now that it is it's actually, as good as Dominic, it's at least as good as Dominic Deegan. Yeah, well, now that there, it, that's my third one. Now, well, now that it's at this level of it's good now, but now it's too weird. It's like you can't you can't show this comic to anyone and expect someone to be like, "Do you seriously read this?" I mean, the only way you can talk about this web comic is the way we're talking about it. Is like, yo. Check this out. There's something going on here. What do you think? Of there this? are people who would read it, though. There's, there's. I, I don't want to be too I blunt because he'll probably eventually hear this. But there's like pedophiles who would give him money for drawing like babies getting fucked. But like Thank he doesn't fuck. reach out to them, and I think that might be a little too real for him. <laughs> well, and speaking of getting a little bit too real, let's be honest. We did our homework on this guy. He does draw straight up porn. Like he does. Yeah, no, he, he's there porn he, kicking he around. He does a. Uh, he does a lot of Adventure Time porn, doesn't he? Yeah, he yeah. does. Um, and so, but the thing is, he's not, he's got a Patreon, and he's not even getting money for that. Like, he's not even marketed the maximum creepy stuff to the point where someone's going to be like, oh, hey, I really like your incredibly illegal in most countries' pictures. Um, I'll pay you for them. But, like, yeah. At its peak, the breeding season, Patreon, that was a porn game about fucking horses or something. At its peak, it was making like $30,000 a month. Jesus. Before right. it died. Yeah, and this guy's got literally zero patrons, and I don't think that he, he's ever even had one. Like, that's never been more than zero. Right, because he doesn't market. Even even his bad aspects, he doesn't market them. He just doesn't market anything. Um, Dobson. You've heard me talk about for Tom Preston, Andrew Dobson, the complaining blue bear. He has, I think, like 21 Patreon people because he has 21 people who hate him so much that they are willing to pay $1 a month to see his stuff first so they can make fun of it. And so, so this guy doesn't have that. Yeah. That's how we get portray on money. We don't need to be loved or respected. We need to be hated. We need right. to talk more about horses fucking, apparently. And we've got to start. Oh, we can do that. Are, are you, have you done some uh, metric analysis on that, that particular episode and come to that conclusion? That, that that's when people are spiking in our viewership and we're getting comment clusters in that area? Well, I was thinking about that, and I was listening to, you, to what she said about that Patreon, and in my head I was doing that meme of that white woman with all the math symbols appearing around her head. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like the Black Lives Matter or if she could... If, if, if a taco is like sandwich. that video meme where like house or sherlock solves something and the camera goes around them and the math flies everywhere yeah yeah it's yeah. like that one of those shows where they're, they're like he's writing on the thing and the marker that people keep around for writing on windows nowhere right but 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 yours was just a big horse cock yeah yeah it's a big uh, old horse there's cock. also dick wolves yeah dick wolves careful like yeah Hey, hey, yeah, let's talk more about dick wolves. Maybe we can get on mention on Shakespeare about how bad we are. Yeah, I could do a whole you episode mean, about breeding you season. Can the man. executive producer of Law & Order? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, ever since Speedweed took over the show, it's gotten worse, but 
you know, it's more interesting. There's also, um, uh, what else is in that game? You can fuck demons, you can fuck elves, you can fuck, uh, like cowgirls. It doesn't exist anymore, does it? I thought it, it, was, you say. That's, that's, it imploded. That's yeah. like big titty girl I mean, like the horns and the, the, see a few variations on I this. I thought that was just a girl in a cowboy hat. I was doing research on No, no, it's like a minotaur lady. Wears. They're called holstarises. Holstarises. I don't know where that term comes from. Uh, you can, uh, you can uh, fuck harpies. I don't know we necessarily need to to dig into this. Needless to say, you could do things in it, and you they got money for those things. And yes, tons. And but well, they like had a fight, and now it's over. Right, but they still got a lot of money, and they never produced anything. Work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, capitalism drove this horse fucking game. <laughs> Whatever it was, apart. Was I, 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 apparently, no. one of the guys. I'm gonna give you one story of this because I'd have to go dig up the rest. But apparently, the programmer and the artist had a fight, and one of the things the programmer had been doing in his life that was making him distant from the project was that he was in love with his best friend's wife and bought a piano so he could teach himself to play a love song on it. Isn't that basically what Eric Clapton did? Like he bought a guitar so he could bang George Harrison's wife. <laughs> kind of. Did he yeah. like make a game about horses? And then they, they just kept leaving windows open. Oh. It, was, it was always too warm. It wanted oh. a nice, wanted a nice breeze. This idiot son. They were gonna to ruin everything. They were gonna let it. They were gonna let you fuck a yeti, but they stopped the project before they let you fuck the yeti. Oh. Was that one of their stretch goals? Yeti fucking? No, it was in development. Oh, like, like I feel like it's supposed to be like the the big. Because Bando, like, they were really excited about it, and now, well, the artist took all of the copyrights and left and decided to make his own game with a different programmer, and the Yeti's in that, but he's ugly now. What is this uh, game? What was this game called again? Do we really need to shill for a furry game? <laughs> I said, not? don't worry. Yeah, no, I'm not shilling for it, but I just, like, I, I forgot what it was called, and I feel like yeah, everyone wants just, to go just, and dig into the weirdness on their own. They might you're just asking for a friend, right? Hey, man, if, I <laughs> if anyone can find the yetis, I would not be afraid to admit is this it. Like, is this like the princess maker of bestiality? No, nah, it's more like Monster Rancher. If uh, anyone okay. can find the oh, lead say, I final bet. private version, I need it. For, for, for real, if you can you find want... that, drop it in the Discord channel for her. She'll appreciate it. Yeah, do you, like, do you want me to give you a detailed explanation of everything in that is game? Because I will. Is that I mean, is that going to be our incentive to get new viewers into the Discord? That if they come here, they'll find a link to a to a defunct Patreon <laughs> sex game. Is oh, that, the, is the that where we're going? Discord is all links to defunct and the disturbing <laughs> things on the internet. I'm pretty and, sure and I've already to linked more. to Corruption of Champions. No, you there's haven't. a bunch of these. There's a whole history of these. Like seriously, there's come talk, into our Discord kids, and show us all the most upsetting things on the wired. We are we are going to look, gaze into the abyss, and we're going to gaze past the abyss into the things even the abyss is ashamed of. Right, we're going to go Man, into I the abyss's show you the furry closet and adventure. like look under the abyss's shoebox and been like, "Hey, abyss, what what's this you got? What is this? Is this what you're into?" It's a flash game on Fur Affinity about where you can be a Stegosaurus who gets fat and eats bears. Wait, what's this called again? That's, I'll show you that one. Yeah, that called? one I think is just called Fat Furry Adventure or something like These that. I'll find are... out. It doesn't have like, a name. These links will not be in the video description. You will have to come into the Discord to get these links. Yeah, we, we they're dropping. If two. I remember where they are, we'll get kicked off of fucking iTunes if we start like. <laughs> <laughs> And, and if you support our Patreon, Can I still describe we have them? even more links to show you. We have what? such links to show you. Yeah, I don't think Tim Cook's a big fan, so I don't think he's going to notice what we're talking about. Yeah, but they'd probably make everybody at Apple listen to us now. They're like, here, we're actually... Oh, hey, hey. They're like, yeah, we really like... I've got, um... MacBook Pro went, but we want it worse, so listen to these I, people. I think make... the, the Zoo Lee Z episode might not have made us... Um, friends of Apple, when we when we talked about the tragedy of how they exploit workers and oh. drive them to suicide. Yeah. I can give you some Patreon stuff if you wanted to like hide it behind a paywall. I've got a um a story I wrote in an attempt to trick perverts on Amazon's Kindle store about someone turning into a couch and then being and then two people fucking on the couch. 
you I know can what, give I, you that if you want. Only post content stolen from other people's Patreon, so not to detract from our Patreon. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll right. give you the Chapo bonus episodes for only one dollar a month. Um, it's been it's been a while. Um, our last we'll you can... with Georgeson was like what two hours ago now. I think yeah, I think we're safe. I think he's passed out. He's, he posted on Facebook that he was celebrating Easter in some town that's not the town he lives in. So. <laughs> Leave it to Georgeson to, to celebrating Easter doesn't mean having a nice ham family. A nice ham family with a nice ham, a nice ham family, a nice ham family, family. The the grandparents. It means going to another town over and getting slaughtered. Did you say ham family? A nice ham family. A nice ham family. A nice ham family. A nice ham family. A nice, ham family. A nice family ham. In 2015. <laughs> well, Georgeson does have a ham family. <laughs> I have trouble believing Georgeson came out of like a really uh, the way he is must be a reflection of his home life, which makes it hard yeah. to believe. Like it's very if there is a such thing typical one. You, you know, actually, what I'd like to do if we're nearing the end of the episode, let's let's have we, uh, we, didn't, we didn't get to meet Georgeson. We did, he he didn't manage to join us, so uh, maybe we'll do some readings. I'm going to rename this whole podcast series as No More Homo Garris Now Waiting for Georgeson. Yeah, no, that's a it's a good it's a good it's a good title of an episode. It's like waiting for Godot, except Godot's a terrible, terrible creature that you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for Grendel. Yeah. There's our episode title. Where what's the the Grocknar or the the, Gro- the Gro- Grugel or Grugel or what was that thing from another episode that I actually actually ended up? Oh the Grundle. The Grundle, yes. The Grundle, yeah. <laughs> waiting, <laughs> waiting for Grundle. Grundle. <laughs> Isn't the grundle the, like another word for the taint? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the first good. episodes. I was, I was trying to remember the uh, the classic beast that was fought, and now I'm going to do it again because I can't remember. Uh, Grandel, Gr- the monster. The Grindle, yeah. <laughs> and you called him the grundle. <laughs> and then the grundle's mother comes and kills him. Right. Ooh. All right. Well, final thoughts, anybody? Well, we're I all- once saw. I once saw an advertisement for like underwear that's like a dick and balls sock. <laughs> okay, I can't do this. I, it, and it said it keeps Ricky Wiggle and the boys out of the grundle. <laughs> 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 that was what the ad said. Ricky <laughs> Wiggle and the boys out of the grundle. Um, I guess if I've got any final thoughts, it's that you know what? You keep making stuff. Even if it's trash, just keep making trash. We're all stuck in the trash can. But I think if we fill it up with trash, we might be able to clam our way out of the top. Uh, I want my final thoughts to be a warning to our viewers. There was a recent death in my town. Toxicology, toxicology says they OD'd on something called goat cakes. Their housekeeper found this person passed out in bed wearing a denim bra duct taped to a ceramic clown. Mother of God. Jesus. <laughs> Found it. Hog hammock boxer briefs. Frog hammock? It's got, it's got like an eagle on it. I'll show it. Hog hammock. Hog hammock. Okay. Shogs, any final thoughts to close out the episode? Information is not knowledge. Knowledge is not wisdom. Wisdom is not truth. Truth is not beauty. Beauty is not love. Love is not music. Music is the best. Wisdom is the domain of the whiz, which is extinct. Beauty is a French phonetic corruption of a short cloth neck ornament currently in resurgence. Yeah.